What's up, y'all? My name is Robert Donaldson, and today we're throwing it all the way back to the 2009 college football season, a season that Iowa football fans definitely recognize as the year the Hawks were able to make a big-time run to the Orange Bowl, and the game we're going to revisit from that year today was held inside Kinnick Stadium early in October in front of a live national audience on ABC, and it turned out to be a really great game between the Michigan Wolverines and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Coming into this game, Iowa was riding on a pair of pretty impressive streaks, which include the second longest active winning streak in college football at 19 games and a streak of not allowing a single rushing touchdown since the previous November, which amounted to 33 quarters. And I mean, this game had it all. It had Jekyll and Hyde, Ricky Stanzi throwing a pick six 30 seconds into the game on his very first pass. It had Adrian Claiborne knocking the daylights out of an opposing QB. It had ESPN's production team driving home the point that yes, Iowa is in fact a state with a lot of corn. And looking back on it, there's obviously a lot of nostalgia with seeing guys like Marvin McNutt, Pat Angerer, Roderick Benz, and even seeing some past Michigan guys like Brandon Graham lining up at D-end, and even seeing Denard Robinson come into the game in the fourth quarter for one of his very first appearances in a college football game. And this is one of those games that when Iowa fans look back on the 2009 season, you know, it might get overlooked simply because there were just so many great moments and so many great games during that run. And one of the key performers from that team that might get overlooked in Hawkeye football lore is former Iowa tight end Tony Moyaki. And as far as his college career is concerned, his performance against Michigan in 2009 stands out as arguably the best he's ever had because despite not running a high number of routes in the game, he still ended the night with a pair of touchdowns, over 100 yards receiving, and on top of all that, Moyaki was bullying Michigan's front seven all night long to help out the ground game. There was also another element of Moyaki's usage that really stood out when you rewatched his game, and it's something that shows up when you watch his usage throughout his career at Iowa. And that was a decision made by the Iowa coaching staff to design plays that keep a tight end in line to pass protect. And a lot of the time, that tight end was Tony Moyaki. And this kind of usage is really an example of why I find it so interesting or intriguing to go back and look at these kinds of games, which were played over a decade ago now, even though it doesn't really feel like that. You know, just to compare the play designs and formations and roles that teams of the past would have or implement versus what teams nowadays implement. And as you connect those dots, you come to understand why certain concepts end up getting phased out over time and even with the traditional offensive brand of football like today's Iowa football team, it's no different because even though conceptually and philosophically Iowa's approach to offense and defense might be similar for the most part as it's always been, both sides of the ball have overcome drastic changes to implementation and play design since 2009. And let's briefly talk about why this usage of keeping a tight end into pass protect has sort of been phased out over the years. Because nowadays, you don't really see effective offenses keeping their tight ends into pass protect for a few reasons. And the first and most obvious reason being that it limits the number of available options for the quarterback to throw to, but more importantly than that, it significantly lessens the stress that's put on safeties and linebackers over the middle, which in turn allows outside corners to almost sit on any vertical route, knowing that they have plenty of help underneath and inside, and that ends up taking a big toll on your passing game. In addition, it also sort of goes with the idea of diminishing returns where yes, you want to be able to pass protect, you want to have a clean pocket for your quarterback, but at what cost? And you still need to make plays down the field. And when you keep your tight end in a block a lot, it's going to lead to more defenders hanging on the line of scrimmage, which allows more disguised blitz looks and also results in more double teams and bracket coverage down the field. All that said, if you're an offense that likes to keep your tight ends in the pass protect, you need to throw in some occasional misdirection so that opposing defenses aren't just 
teeing off, attacking your O-line, or getting complacent by dropping back in coverage. And as we take a look at Moyaki's first touchdown, that's exactly what we get. And the first thing you're going to notice about this play pre-snap is that Michigan is going to line up with a heavy look to the offense's right. You know, they have a safety rolled up. They have a pair of lingering linebackers over the top of that line. And they also have a future NFL guy at that defensive end spot. And Stansy sees this too. And he's going to make what I can surely assume is a check for Moyaki to run a delayed seam route rather than stay out on the edge and pass protect. And once the ball gets snapped, Stansy can tell almost immediately that this is going to be a big play because the safety number 40, who is assigned to Moyaki, treats this play like a green dog blitz, which just means that he's staying in coverage unless his assigned matchup ends up blocking. In that case, he ends up turning his coverage assignment into a blitz. And you have to give credit to Moyaki here because he was always very good at selling his blocking assignments on play fakes. And right here, he does a great job at selling his pass protection, which gives off the illusion that he's staying in to pass protect. And the second the safety sees Moyaki move into his pass set, he takes off up the field. And when you couple that action with a perfectly timed delayed seam route with what essentially turns into a clear route on the corner pattern by the slot receiver, Paul Chaney Jr., it leaves the middle of the field wide open and Moyaki can fly. And this play turns into an easy walk-in touchdown and it's the first points for Iowa in this game. And there's a lot that goes in to a successful play like this. For one, ironically enough, Iowa's reputation as a team known for leaving their tight ends into pass protect actually sold Michigan into believing that's what they were doing here. And coming into this game, it wasn't really an insider secret that Michigan's defense was very aggressive and that they liked to blitz, especially on obvious passing downs. And on this play, Iowa took advantage of that already known aggressiveness and put a touchdown on the board. And throughout this game, although Iowa wasn't necessarily ripping off large chunks of yardage on the ground, Iowa's O-line and tight ends were moving Michigan's front seven out of running lanes, and Mo Yaki played a massive role in that. You know, on the fan favorite Brandon Wager rushing touchdown, Mo Yaki was paving the way. On Adam Robinson's big run fresh out of halftime, Mo Yaki was paving the way, alongside fellow tight end Alan Reisner. And a number of times throughout the game, Iowa was running the ball in Moyaki's direction because the guy was lighting up defenders all night long. And it seemed like every snap, he was just putting guys in the ground or just wiping them off the screen completely. And that's what leads us to Moyaki's second touchdown of the night. And it was essentially the play that led Iowa to winning the game. And once again, it's a play that is set up based on Iowa's reputation on offense and also based on what they had already been doing all night long. And as we watch this play back here, Iowa's offensive line does a really good job at immediately flowing to their left, which gives off the indication of inside zone. And Mo Yaki is going to sell as if he's climbing to the second level to set a block on this linebacker right before sharply turning inside into his route as soon as he sees the defender is committed to playing the run. And as we play it back, take note of every defender on this side of the ball from Michigan because every single one of them bites on this run fake and then compounds that by being late to even find the ball. And that's a credit to the respect that they have for Iowa's ground game because what's happening here is that Michigan is trying to cheat and defend the run solely based on their keys rather than reading their keys and then finding the ball. And you see this a lot with teams that are gassed near the end of games or with teams that are just getting constantly punched in the mouth and are kind of looking for that splash play or momentum shift to throw the opposing offense off their game and make them more one-dimensional. Unfortunately for Michigan, once Moyaki catches this ball in space, he has the wheels to take it easily into the end zone and that result ended up being a significant lapse in the fourth quarter of what turned out to be a very close road game as Iowa went on to win by two points with 46 seconds left thanks to a game ceiling interception by Iowa safety Brett Greenwood, which is also a big piece of nostalgia. Looking back on Moyaki's career at Iowa, obviously it's no secret that injuries were a big part of it. 
and even as he transitioned into the NFL. But with that said, he was one of the best tight ends Iowa's had under Kirk Ferentz. And that night, you know, it was a night that Moyaki really just imposed his will and showed the nation that he had all of the tools in his bag to dominate. And looking back on this game as sort of a time capsule in a sense has been really cool to do. All that said, I want to thank you all for checking out today's video. I had a ton of fun putting this together and going back to watch a game that really just holds a lot of nostalgia for me was really cool. So if you want me to put out more videos like this where we sort of take an in-depth retrospective look on individual performances or past games, whether good or bad, let me know and I'll try my best to make that happen. And I say it every video, but I do love it when y'all leave comments and drop likes on the video and subscribe or share. And if you want to take it a step further, you can always follow me on Twitter at RobDFB. But as always, I will see you all in a future video. Take it easy.